Hi guys, welcome back here. We're going to do a Navian tankless install. This is a install from scratch, start to beginning. We're doing a gas installation here. We're doing the power accessory installation here. We're doing the venting installation on this video and we're installing the tank itself. Here I am measuring out where I'm going to put my blackboard. I'm going to put two, three, uh, two by fours and I'm gonna staple them on the wall with a ram set stapler. Well, it ran some nail gun. So I'm right now measuring where I want it to be. I'm gonna cut these uh, two by four exactly so I can have them at the same length. And then I'm gonna put them on the wall there. So that's the first one I just cut. Measuring out my second one here. And as you can see, there's no plumber crack there. So I'm a professional. And professional plumbers don't show their cracks. <laughs> so, <I put> that. <laughs> All right. so cutting up the second one gonna measure the third one and we're gonna cut it i don't remember exactly the measurements here this video was i did this last month and i finally got time to, uh, finally got time to do some um editing all right so now i'm marking the spot on the wall where i'm going to put my two by fours that's my handy dandy ram set here now, I'm not going to put them too high nor too low. I just want it right in the center where I can um, have my venting done properly. There I am. I'm using my level to make sure my 2x4 is straight. And then, boom. I am shooting the nails in the crease. Not right on the center blocks. They're easier to go through um, where the mortar joints are. Um, I put three nails in each of the 2x4s. Now, there I am. I'm leveling up the second one here. I did not space them accordingly. I just threw them over. Um, and yes, I did level out the <clears throat> vertical. I just didn't show that on the camera. And the gun is not that powerful. I'm just showing off there. Boom, boom. Uh, all right. So now I'm putting up my blackboard here. And I am going to screw it down with, uh, I think it's T15. It's an inch and a half in there. Uh, construction screws put a good amount in so we're gonna hang this nav and tank this uh, I probably put in 10 of them in there in one sheet make sure it doesn't go anywhere all right all right I'm grab some more screws there bam 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 I'm measuring the bottom there to cut the other Blackboard. I actually was going to do it different. I was going to build a floating wall and then do it that way. I did it with the top of the side of the and I was like, you know what? I have enough space here on the wall. So I'm just going to staple it. That's what I did. The reason why I built the floating wall for the last one is because the, they had a cast iron drain that was running along the wall where they went next to me. So obviously to put the board over the drain so I had to build a floating wall to do that maybe I will make I did not make a video so there is the bad boy there is the Navian tank that's right there it's an NPE A2 model this one comes with a recirculating line what's so cool about this you don't have to hook up the recirculating line but if you want to you can in your future uh, this is 200,000 BTUs it's 199,000 BTUs uh, so you have to do a gas load calculation. You have to do a riser diagram. There I am telling you to read the manual. That is a quick installation sheet that comes with the manual right there. That is for your venting, that box, and that is your hook to hook the, na the Navian on. We're getting the Navian out of the way. We're going to screw one screw in into the hook. Now you want to make sure you get a, at least a 12 inch riser from the, from the base, the top of your Navian a 12 inch riser for your venting so now you know once at least if it's possible a minimum of 12 inch so i did measure that out and i'm sticking ooh, about two four six screws in there to lever it okay Clean up. now i'm gonna put the box over here to get the tankless out and it's a one-man job this job um normally it will take me four hours get everything done four or five hours on a good day and that's it i'm going home 
but because I was, it was a Saturday and normally don't work Saturday, I took my time. It took me all day. Now we're going to work on the gas here, all right? So we're going to shut the gas off. Always shut the gas off. We're disconnecting the union there. Whoever installed the speeder did not do a good job, the gas company. They, it was not leveled whatsoever. So I'm going to fix that, all right? So I'm putting a T here with a close, and this is all one inch. Um, some dope, tape and dope, I only dope. You can do both ways or or one way. I choose to just dope unless I'm working with a, at least two inch pipe, then I'll do both. All right, <clears throat> that's the T in, that's the close nipple. Close nipple goes on the left side with the new, with the old um, union there on the, on the bottom where the um, gas meter is. That's where the, um, the gas kick is. You want to put that on. I had to disconnect, so right there, I had, I had to, to fix that. There's a the union side. there on the, the, the yeah. gas side, the gas company side. I had to fix that to level it out. There, yeah, that's yeah. me pointing at it right there. They did yeah, not do a good job of that. So it's now level. It's in good. Everything's doped up. And I got my one-inch piece going into the hole. That's the gas. Um, that's me caulking it with an exterior clear caulk. I'm doing both and I'm gonna spray um, all that I did that's all galvanized spray there well I got some on the house don't tell the customer all right this is the Navian service valve kit we're gonna install it's not the Navian brand it's Johnstone valve brand which I like better than Navian brand so here we are taping and doping okay in here we got the hot side the hot side comes with a t and p you want to tape and dope that and then install it on the hot side it comes it goes on the side so there go the dope right now it goes on the side boom 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 right there good make sure it's in good now you want i'm using press fittings here i know i'm not a professional duh that's why i use press Get that all in there together. And you want to add that. It's a male adapter. Press. Do that for the cold side. Now, you notice I did not tape nor dope the TMP male adapter. You don't have to. It's only for draining the water heater if there is a excessive amount of pressure. All right. That's the union there for the always 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 use two wrenches when tightening these bad boys okay add your service valve there you want to turn it at an angle because cold side is good you don't have to turn that at an angle but the hot side yes because the gas comes down so it looks like that so now i'm working on the water here now remember i'm changing with the location of the water here. i'm putting it on the far wall next to the outside at the end I will show you where I moved it to I'm making holes for um, the copper lining because you don't want the copper to touch the concrete copper and concrete does not they go hand in hand they like to fight and the concrete will win so I'm measuring out my copper here with a split ring in the plates and um, once you connect them boom and then once again, I'm not a professional, so I'm not gonna sweat these fittings. I'm gonna press them. Leave the sweater for the old timers. No, I'm just kidding. I used to sweat. I still do sweat. I just prefer to, to press. It's better. Um, it's guaranteed a 40 years from the manufacturer. And I have not had any problem with any of my fittings. All right, so now I did not press anything yet. I am gonna press and show you how what I did here, but here I am connecting the gas. I run the galvanized line in so it's an 18 inch piece, and then I transfer that from galvanized to black. Now, the reason why I did one inch here is because he might potentially add a dual unit when he does do some upgrade to the home, okay? So if he does do that, you wouldn't have to change the gas around. The one inch would be suffice for both unit. I'm doing a split ring here with one inch galvanized plate in. I'm gonna transfer our, our dumb that down from one inch 
down to a uh, three quarter. We're gonna have a one inch and three quarter T connecting uh, or dope in there. That's my one inch to three quarter T. Always have your drip leg where it's convenient, which will be right there. And that's my drip leg. And then we're gonna tighten up our cap for our drip leg. And then we're gonna work on connecting our gas to our unit. So I, so there, some folks like to put a, um, a union here, like I did, and some people like to put coupling. I prefer union right there. I'm dry fitting our gas right now, which when I learned, when I was learning to um, plumb, uh, the guy who taught me said, never dry fit, just do it. But I, I like to dry fit. And there it is. Obviously, that's not what I dry fitted. I did change it up a little bit because it didn't work. Unit. That's the old unit right there. Gallon. 50 gallon American, American water that he's unit. Converting. It was leaking. I think it was 14, right, 15 so years old and was leaking from the tank. That's what we called and said, so hey, can I get a tank? I so like, we ran the copper get pipe. whatever you want. Boom. All the way Me here. doing the water the here. Showing you where we're going to connect the water lines this line and abandon oh, this old I'll water line. I removed the T and put two 90s there. This side, which I wrote that T, we're going to cut that out. So we're going to put a 90 there and get rid of the back. And then this is Same the thing for the whole side. Cut the T out and put a 90 there. This will prevent bacteria from growing in abandoned pipes. I don't like leaving abandoned pipes there uh, because uh, water stagnant water can grow bacteria. All right. The after work. Let's get to it. We're cutting the pipe right there. Drain it in the bucket. First one. All right. So now the gas is up. We're about to press the things. Boom, boom. Yes, I'm that fast. I'm a super presser. Uh, my three-quarter jaw is broke, so I'm, i i got to use the post-quarter three-quarter jaw here, and that take twice as long to do. I did order new three-quarter jaws here. I don't know why I'm back outside. Let's see, what am I doing here? Oh, we're going to do venting. All right, so all I did for this unit is that I exhaust. I did the venting for the exhaust. The intake, I did not need to. I could if I wanted to, but I did not need to because there was only two unit that was using yeah, we're gonna work on um, oxygen in the basement, which was the tankless and the, uh, the furnace and the dryer. And you, as you can see, there is significant space down there for the units to um, draw from. All right. I don't know what I'm doing there. Get all the insulation of the like I know what I'm doing. Oh, I stuck the PVC pipe in. Drop in. It, so it. That's the PVC pipe there. Says we have a, Remember, have at least 12, 12 inches, inches of rice. It doesn't look like it, but But we're going to call it 12. We'll make it look good. All right, so I am drilling right now. Now, I didn't plan any of this out. I just threw it all together. Normally, I'll plan it out, but I didn't. I cut 12 inches, um, but I had to cut some down because I didn't realize that gas was going to be in the way. There's a gas pipe there that's gonna, that was in the way. So uh, I threw in a 45 to go right on the gas. Uh, I did not want to... Very important, you don't want to create a trap, okay? Because you want these units to condense. And what that does is when it heats up the PVC, PV, PVC pipe, it will cool and condense. And you want to have a back pitch so it flows back into the unit and then uh, flows into uh, the con condensation in the bottom. It's built to do that. That is my can cane for um, my intake. I'm not going to vent that outside. And once that's done, you want to check, make sure there's no leak. Now we're going to work on the electrical here. So disconnect or unscrew six screws for the electrical panel open up that bad boy where we have a ge electrical box we're gonna add a 15 amp fuse here 
to the bottom right section cut the wires adjust the wires to a better picture gonna be down to the bottom right right there we're adding our ground wire and the box is still live here um i think he has a generator i'm not sure i didn't i don't remember and i left my own um, my torque bit upstairs and i didn't have to get it so um i made a, a shift one now i'm going to work on the neutral you want to strip your neutral wire run your neutral in the back as you can see it's already done because i'm that fast and that good and after the neutral damn did that already um i did not do the the hot wire yet because i didn't connect this side so now i'm putting up my box in it's a one gang box and it's gonna uh, a 15 amp gfci will be installed here so i'm stapling my wire you want to staple your wire i think it, it's every every 12 i'm not electrician but the more stable the better <laughs> uh won't fail for having too much staples uh, maybe you will I'm, i don't know um, who knows uh, electrician will know. i'll probably get that in the comments all right <clears throat> so that's me stripping my wires i got the the neutral the ground and they hot in the back you got the line and the load okay want to properly install your wires according to your line and load. install the back but this um gfi gfci it came with its own plate its own cover plate which is perfect there it is this white cover plate now i did not install this upside down that is the correct way to install a plug or outlet all right that is the correct way i don't care what any electricians say that is the correct way all right we got power to the unit now setting the date and time and when did i do this let's see we're gonna find out right now i did this on the 12th of january really it seems longer than that oh i did this on the 12th of january 2024 really so today is the 26th that I'm recording. Well, editing this video. I feel like this was last month in December. Hey, oh, okay. And <clears throat> it is a military. Well, you have to set this to military time. I think this is five o'clock. Now we go to feet per gallon. It's going to be natural gas here. I am moving so fast. It's um, that's the feet that we're in. No recirculation pump. That's going to be added. I went back because I went to fast elevation. No circulation, no recirculation, and that's it. Hit OK again, and one more time. Boom. The standard that is set to is 120. I like to bump it up to 125, depending on the run, to 130. Okay, so I am showing the electrical. That's all done. And I didn't show you guys. Show you. Oh, that's it. That's it. Well, that's. That white box back there was the um, the acid neutralizing pump, and the reason why we install acid neutralizing pump because this the condensate for this unit is, is it is acidic, and it is going to be pumped to the drain, the main drain. So we want to neutralize the acid out of the, the pump before we in before we discharge it. Why? Even though it's PVC, uh, state codes. I didn't do that. That's not my rhyming. <laughs> state code says we don't know what's underground. So we have to um, uh, we have to neutralize just in case it's cast iron or, or galvanized. We have to neutralize so destroy the pipes. But that's it, guys. Any questions? Don't ask. Because I don't know what I'm doing.